Sutta number 7. Monks in the Himalayas, the king of mountains, there are rugged and uneven zones where neither monkeys nor human beings can go. There are rugged and uneven zones where monkeys can go but not human beings. Then there are even and delightful regions where both monkeys and human beings can go. There along the monkey trails, hunters set up traps of pitch for catching monkeys. Those monkeys who are, who are not foolish and frivolous, when they see the pitch, avoid it from afar. But a monkey who is foolish and frivolous approaches the pitch and seizes it with his hand. He gets caught there. Thinking, I will free my hand, he seizes it with his other hand. He gets caught there. Thinking, I will free both hands, he seizes it with his foot. He gets caught there. Thinking, I will free both hands and my foot, he seizes it with his other foot. He gets caught there. Thinking, I will free both hands and feet, he applies his muzzle to it. He gets caught there. Thus monks, that monkey trapped at five points, lies there screeching. He has met with calamity and disaster, and the hunter can do with him as he wishes. The hunter spears him, fastens, fastens him to, to that same block of wood, and goes off where he wants. So it is monks when one strays outside one's own resort into the domain of others. Therefore, monks, do not stray outside your own resort into the domain of others. Mara will gain access to those who stray outside their own resort into, into the domain of others. Mara will get a hold on them. And, and what is not a monk's own resort but the domain of others? It is the five cause of sensual pleasure. This is not a monk's own resort but the domain of others. Move in your own resort, monks, in your own ancestral domain. Mara will not gain access to those who move in their own resort, in their own ancestral domain. Mara will not get a hold on them. And what is a monk's resort, his own ancestral domain? This is the four intense states of mindfulness. What for? Here, monks, a monk dwells contemplating the body in the body, ardent, clearly comprehending, etc. Uh, feelings in feelings, mind in mind, Dhamma in Dhamma. Uh, so here you see, this hunter, uh, he wants to catch the monkey. Uh, he puts a block of wood there and puts some fruits. Uh, and then uh, the wood, uh, he puts all this uh, tar, this pitch, uh, which is very sticky. Uh, last time when I was a small boy, uh, so I used to catch birds. Uh, <laughs> I burn the rubber and put it on the stick. <laughs> uh, so... This monkey goes to that fruit, uh, uh, and then he wants to eat, uh, puts one hand and gets caught. And then he puts the other hand to free the first hand, uh, both hands get caught. And then he puts his leg, both legs, and puts his mouth also gets caught. So these five things uh, represent, uh, the five points uh, represent the five senses. Uh. Mara can catch us at the five senses. Uh. Uh, so we have to be careful uh, uh, when you see a pretty girl or a handsome man. Uh. <laughs> Uh, that's why uh, the practice of Satipatthana uh, is to divorce ourselves uh, from from the world and put it uh, uh, concentrate. Actually, the four objects of Satipatthana is basically uh, body and mind plus the Dhamma. The Dhamma is the Buddha's teachings. Uh, here uh, they translate actually uh, the Dhamma they translate as uh, phenomena. But later uh, I will explain to you uh, it cannot be phenomena. It must be the Buddha's teachings Dhamma.